<laughs> <And> <laughs> somebody's going to hang me for that comment, but it's uh, already there. <laughs> no, have you ever been to a riot? What happened? Yeah, they did. And I did a lot of those demos, but no, 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 none of them did any good to anybody. <laughs> you got yourself a pat in the mouth. Some of the Arctic, it's the right thing to do is to sort of find the speed and the happiness and, and the joy that would be had early years. Mm. It would be really fun to go there once again and, and give people what they really want. Because of, to be is... honest, they, yeah, that's what they want. Hello you Metal Pilgrims and welcome to the new episode of our interview series and a very special welcome to all the Sonata Arctica fans for today. I'm more than happy to welcome the band's frontman Tony Kakao. Tony, first of all, thank you so much for jumping on the call with me and finding time. How's it going, man? Well, I'm good. Happy to be here, actually. Thanks for inviting me. So, yeah, acoustic music. Yeah. All things in the world. <laughs> I hear this is the next big thing, right? The acoustic thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that, I hope so, sir. Certainly, yeah. <laughs> well, we are going to find out in just about, what, four days, right? Or something like yes. that? Because uh -huh. this is exciting. I know, right? The big news about uh, Sonata Artica, of course, is the release of your, you know, first part. By the way, first part of your first acoustic double record, right? Uh, the yes. Acoustic Adventures. First of all, congrats on finishing it up, guys. I mean, despite pandemic, there's anything going on. Yeah. Right? I, I know it could be tough. We finished it already a year ago, actually. Oh. It was supposed to be released a year ago, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> first was a first kind of thing that we need to get acquainted with, with the material <laughs> all over again, you know, because it, the whole thing, the process and everything, it's not exactly fresh in your mind anymore. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I can, but I got to say, so I was able to listen to the record, of course, and I got to say that you guys are taking a listener on quite an enchanting journey with that one, right? So could you talk a bit about, first of all, how did this idea of an acoustic album arise and how did it change and evolve since 2016, I assume? Well, um, uh, I remember thinking about acoustic album already, uh, I don't know, must have been like 2002 or three mm -hmm. or something, whenever we recorded uh, Mary Lou, yeah. song from our first album, yeah. as an acoustic thing, and, and, and uh, uh, but nothing happened, obviously, in, in a long, long time, but then along the years, we every now and then we played some acoustic songs as a tiny bit uh, of, of the show, a few yeah. songs here, a few songs there, and then... Uh, I don't know how many years ago, less than 10 years ago, we played acoustic festivals in Finland, yeah. which was a huge surprise for a lot of the, even the people, you know, who arranged the festivals. Uh, what you do <laughs> playing acoustically? And like, yeah, yeah, hello, hello. It was in a, in a contract. Please read what you sign. <laughs> so, and then nothing came out of that other than a lot of spunk and, uh, you know, idea that it, hey, this is so much fun. We're going to do yeah. this again until, um, we got everybody convinced that we can actually go and, and pull off an acoustic tour, mm -hmm. the acoustic adventures tour that we had, was it like 2019? Yeah. And, and and then we managed with that, convince our label to kind of allow us to go to the studio and record these things. <laughs> because it, 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 it was really intimate and, and beautiful occasion, the whole tour actually. And, and we had a lot of fun and, and, and the songs actually had evolved already at that point. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit, and obviously because it was a tour and a show, mm -hmm. it had material for more than just one album. Mm -hmm. So two albums was it, and 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 and, and here we are. Yeah, a long story, really short. <laughs> that's that's a really interesting thing, and one thing that kind of strikes me the most, right, is that. The arrangements on some of the songs are very different from the original versions, right? I actually, you know, at one point, I'll be honest with you, I was listening to it the first time without looking at the at the at the names of the songs, title of the songs, and a couple of times I had to go back and I was like, which song is that? I was like, wow, I'm really surprised because it did not exactly sound like the original right one, right? So. Can you, can you say, did you guys do that deliberately, right? I mean, writing this whole new arrangements, or am I just delusional and uh, nothing like that is actually there? <laughs> yeah, we really wanted to go away from, from just, you know, writing, uh, playing the songs straight. with the MTV Unplugged kind because, of thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that was my original idea. I wanted to have some kind of feeling like that, mm -hmm. but, but the original MTV plugged in. Yeah had that you rearrange songs like let's say uh layla mm -hmm. yeah uh, by eric clapton that kind of thing that you change the song and yeah. 
bring something new to it and then even some in some occasions make it hell a lot better than the original yeah. like my, my favorite song version I, of Layla is actually from MTV Unplugged I'll be honest with you man. <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's oof, it's it's wonderful and that was like that's that was my idea yeah my my idea I don't know how the other guys think but then, anyway that this <laughs> That's how we approach the whole thing. That if something has a beautiful melody, mm -hmm. it must work mm -hmm. acoustically as well. It's just a matter of, of how do you play it and what do you put around it. So we mm -hmm. just kept an open mind and, and uh, just rewrote boldly some bits and, and new material on, on, on top of, uh, of certain songs. Like, let's say, The Rest of the Sun belongs to me, the first single mm -hmm. release yes. from, the, from the song, uh, uh, from the album. It, it was. Uh, The original version is a bonus track for Japan mm -hmm. from, I think, uh, Winner Hearts Killed, it must be. And uh, it, it's a really speedy double kick power metal. Yeah, exactly. Smash thing. And uh, a lot of people don't even know it existed until maybe hopefully now. <laughs> <laughs> Acoustically. But anyway, it, there's no point even trying to play that song the same way it is on that album. But I love the melodies and I wanted to give it a try. And, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we arranged it then all again and then we did everything even the solo bit which was which probably is one of the biggest changes on the song that we just took the whole thing out and rewrote a new new yeah, solo exactly yeah which is now this rhythmic thing instead of this really fast unison thing which just i can't see that kind of thing working maybe for some acoustic instrumentalists mm -hmm. it might work but for us it's still uh, developing maybe <laughs> so it was smarter to kind of <laughs> maybe find an alternative way of approaching it. That's interesting. And I assume that the whole creative process for, you know, for making this acoustic album happen, and, right? It was quite different from the regular dynamics you guys had in the studio. So, I mean, how did you guys divide the responsibilities these time, this time? I mean, because there was no actually writing new material, right? It was rewriting and building on top of the existing one. So how did this dynamics in the studio has changed for you? I actually I gave uh, the other guys much more freedom mm -hmm. to do whatever they want <laughs> with this acoustic <laughs> thing because the songs are already there. And I'm, I, yeah, <laughs> I did some arrangements myself mm -hmm. and and uh, let's say I, I did like maybe 15 mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if one or two of them ended up on these two <laughs> albums. <laughs> so, so there are actually there are a lot of songs that aren't still on these okay. two acoustic volumes but maybe you, if we get to do more of these so maybe part they, three they and four later their, on yeah 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 that's uh, a hope mm -hmm. and then wish that i have it would be great but anyway I, the guys actually i had other things to attend to like rest yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, so it, this gave the other guys an opportunity and chance to kind of do what they feel comfortable doing mm -hmm. with the instruments given Because, uh, you know, if I start telling them what to play, because mm -hmm. I, I am not so familiar with acoustic instruments myself, and I don't know their ability, like Elias is, how, how really, really good he is with the acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a different animal from exactly. electric guitar. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, it made a lot of sense for me to give them freedom and, and, and just, you know, do what feels good. Mm -hmm. so it makes the whole thing much more comfortable for everybody and I think you can hear that also on the album then so everybody got to do pretty much what they wanted to do within certain frames obviously but, but it, it, this was maybe the easiest thing for me to record ever I just you know sang basically mm -hmm. and I did a lot of those demos but never, <laughs> none of them did any good to anybody so <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they were I, I, maybe I just I overdid some of them, which is sort of as a statement as well, why it was smarter for the guys to take care of the arrangements more yeah. so than I did, because I, I, I tend to go over the hills and far away with my <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> ambitions. That's, so. that's awesome. That's awesome, man. So have you guys considered ever writing this whole new set of songs acoustically, right? And this new style of yours that you're exploring, it looks like in the last couple of years, the fans seems to love it. Yes, uh, I already have like one or two songs that mm -hmm. are, if we get to do more of these acoustic albums, then they will be on those albums instead of a normal Sonata Arctica mm -hmm. studio album, because they are, they were born to be acoustic mm -hmm. songs. And I think it's wrong to alter them and then sort of 
make them put them on the altar of heavy metal <laughs> in, a, in a wrong way that they weren't born to be that way and, mm -hmm. and so 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 yeah that that's been on my on my mind anyways you know yeah. and it would of course it would make a lot of sense also you know telling the album wise mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the business wise having something totally new and original oh but you know a lot of these songs are so different from the original already that yes. they they are and a lot of the songs like let's say the rest of the song belongs to me they are a little bit obscure mm -hmm. and work as a new song for many fans i think exactly exactly all right so you you mentioned that you guys i mean that you at least have some ideas for new material already some of it is going to be acoustic some of it not so and i know that you guys are still working on the acoustic version right the first one is being released the second one is going to be announced very soon right the second part i assume so yeah. but um so what about the new original material by sonata artica are you guys planning on releasing something new in the, in the coming years and if so when can we expect it um if we get to do the touring things that we have planned and i i, I really hope so. i'm set to see you guys in september so you have to come <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so yeah I, um uh, the idea is to go and hit the studio early next year mm -hmm. so so 2020 let's, let's see three yeah yeah it's alarmingly it's like yes. huge in 20 like yeah, yeah, imagine. I am, yeah I'm, not, I'm not ready with the 2022 exactly it's like <laughs> it's like the last two years disappeared right i mean what happened yeah, they did, yeah it's just like last year was 2019 <laughs> exactly <laughs> touring wise it definitely but, was yeah, yeah but for me yeah. so yeah it, um, yeah well that's the idea anyways yeah. i don't know i haven't really written all that much material with a some of the Arctic real studio album in mm -hmm. mind uh, but but I have some cornerstones here and there mm -hmm. already so I, I, and the idea is to go maybe a little bit more in a, in a direction of metal wow that's you know, a, that, that was my I, second I, question like the next part of this question yeah yeah the Salvi album it, it came out totally different than what I had in mind because mm -hmm. I, in my in my head Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like a rather upbeat and speedy and happy album but then when it was ready and i listened to it i was like this is so slow that i i don't know where i've been <laughs> marinating myself but you know it'll sink in there in our uh, you know catalog of albums eventually mm -hmm. you know a lot of album uh, bands release different kind of albums mm -hmm. let's say queen for example and not all of them are pleasing everybody but everybody there's there are fans for each album and but i, I think generally speaking for some of the arctic I, it's the right thing to do is to sort of find the speed mm -hmm. and the and the happiness and, and the joy that would be had early years mm -hmm. that, uh, it would be really fun to go there once again and and give people what they really want because of, the, to be is, honest, they, yeah, that's what they want. This is so, really yeah. interesting. Yeah, but Sonata Artica has been known for, you know, for your very distinctive sound, right? The air of the early days. And this is what you're yes. being measured against, you know, most of the time, right? But uh, at the same time, I feel like Evolven, and I definitely can say that your sound has evolved, not only just deviated from the original formula, but just evolved in different directions. Still keeping that essence of Sonata Artica is, is still a great thing. And the whole idea that the band like you, you which, which is very established around the world, is able to experiment just shows that you guys are, you know, have something up your sleeve much more than just regular uh, sticking to, to a formula that has been, you know, good for you for the past couple of years. So this oh, is just, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think that this is just my personal thing that if you guys would give the fans what they want, yet at the same time show that you are not still not afraid of experiment, and this is this is an mm. amazing thing, you know, for for you. Yeah. And everything. Taking whatever good we have learned the last, let's say, ten years, and <laughs> putting it in the in the uh, formula of the early days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that it. Got, got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got yourself a platinum album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, but um, that distinctive sound, in my personal opinion, right, comes from, I assume, from the many influences you guys have as musicians, right? So what is, and this was one of the questions from our subscribers when I announced that I'll be doing an interview with you, what is one of the most unexpected and surprising influences for your sound, I mean, historically, musically, lyrically, aesthetically? Mm, well, uh, surprising. Uh, Midnight Oil. Really? Aerosmith. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Queen is not a surprise. Though. Queen is is great. I mean, I don't yeah, it think there's... should not be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because I have been talking about it so much. <laughs> I love Queen, <laughs> but surprising, you know. Um, I don't know. It's really hard to come up with any any like huge surprise. Maybe some. I can't even say if that's mm-hmm. if it has any if it has changed or influenced our music in any any way. But I've been listening to a lot of, you know, early jazz, mm-hmm. for example, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That is not like boom, 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 weird stuff, but there are actual <laughs> songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> somebody's going to hang me for that comment. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, they're, they're, they're songs that are in a popular form, in a, yeah, in a yes. kind of <laughs> pop formula, in, in, let's put it that way. So, uh, so that kind of stuff, uh, I've been listening to that a lot and I, 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 I but I'm I'm sort of blind and deaf to tell if it has had any influence and would we do. <laughs> maybe maybe now someone could ah now I understand where those last, last few <laughs> albums came from. <laughs> but I've, you learn and it takes something from everything you listen to and and uh, love basically, mm-hmm. and it has some some effect on one, one, what you do and how you see things and how you approach things that you do so certainly but i i don't know other than those few that i or told you earlier there and i'm not sure if we have any any huge surprises at least i don't have but the other guys they might tell you some weird finnish bands that you have never heard of <laughs> that have influenced them a lot but but some of the arctic's music uh, i'm not sure Devin townsend that's not a surprise maybe because there are some moments that are really maybe me trying to mm-hmm. beat Tevin Townsend as a songwriter. Yeah, that's Some bits and bits of life, like evolving into this massive uh, echo chamber, beautiful mass of sound this things. Those those I've learned or sort of taken from Devin Townsend, and uh, he's done some beautiful things. Absolutely, absolutely. And what about lyric wise? I mean, where do you personally dig inspiration for writing lyrics? Is it your personal experiences or, um, you know, just well, books and everything? Yeah, well, I would have, I would probably be in jail. <laughs> if like, even, even like a tiny fraction of, of the lyrics were actual. <laughs> yeah, about slaying stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm taking this back. Yeah. <laughs> so, so no, they're just, you know, <laughs> Like, oftentimes I, I tell people that, you know, I wonder if, if uh, Stephen King gets this same, <laughs> same same question, you know, that if they are from his but personal still, I mean, you, But of you, course, you, you know, you put something of yourself and, and sort of uh, these uh, diary moments mm-hmm. in your songs, even if you're t- telling about murdering blah, 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 something or whatever, telling about wolves running in the hills, there's some, some bit that like reminds you of certain thing about your life yeah and and these are the ways that you're gonna make a million dollars in this like <laughs> you want to be a millionaire because <laughs> you remember a certain year because you remember the song that you wrote that, that had that thing and then then it connects and <laughs> but it, you know um these are just stories i like my tiny movies that i see in my in my head and i i try to try to picture a lot of the songs in, in 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 a way that they are sort of like a movie happening mm-hmm. but then again some songs are just like <laughs> educational mm-hmm. you know in a way like uh, i have a right for example that is that's rather personal in a way mm-hmm. although although i have i have a wonderful father and i have no problems with with i had a beautiful childhood and everything but but that was just me uh, getting to be a father for the first time. I, I, I was a young father at the time mm-hmm. when I wrote that song, and and and, and uh, it just I wanted to write a guide for myself, basically, mm-hmm. and sort of um, warning myself about things that might go wrong, mm-hmm. and then and trying just you know get into that emotion, you know, write a song that might help someone and, and myself at mm-hmm. the same time. That's some songs are like that, and some are just imagination, and some are just make no sense whatsoever. I had some idea back in the day, and I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a father of two, yeah. so I'm gonna go and re-listen to those uh, that song. And <laughs> 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 yeah, 
<laughs> check out the lyrics once again. <laughs> Ivan, another, and, and I don't want to keep you here for too long. I assume you're very busy with interviews and everything. Um, first of all, the question about the Sonata Artica book, which was published, when was that? 2014, was it? Some time ago. That's, it was, that, I would yeah. guess, yeah, yeah, around that time, yeah. So, so the main question, which actually has been a, voted quite a lot, is whether we're going to see a new edition of that book or maybe a follow-up to it or something like that. Because it seems to be very hard to find at the moment, not only in Europe, but in the United States as well, because most of our subscribers are from the US, right? So that right. has been yeah. the question, which has been asked quite a lot. Well, uh, I hope, you mm -hmm. know, because things have happened since since that uh, the book was released and, and, and it would obviously be make a lot of sense to kind of use whatever material we had there mm -hmm. and then I'll add it. to it and then get it re release it in some form like in as an as an ebook or mm -hmm. as a you know what do you call these books that we audio books yeah. and yeah. such things that would be great as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sorry. Audio, i'm very old school i collect vinyl yeah. records <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I listened to like 50 books last year yeah. and which is a lot for me yeah. anyways and and, <laughs> and uh, so yes i i hope get to do that have the right for the book and, and uh, we're, we're still in terms with the with the guy who wrote it so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's it would make a lot of sense and I, I i hope we get to do that sort of at least when the whole thing is over and before we are six feet under that we would have a like a complete circle of life mm -hmm. to leave to the next generation is to wonder <laughs> once upon a time there was a band called Sonata Art <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome this is awesome man well I personally hope that you guys will be able to at least you know start hitting the road early next this year already right I mean because yeah. as I said I'm from Kyiv Ukraine myself but uh you know um, the channel is in English obviously but uh, I'm set to see you guys on the 22nd of September so hopefully you guys will make it to Kyiv and uh, I'll, I'll catch you live and maybe you know grab a pint together or something like that absolutely that. which leads us to the last question with which we usually close the episode and I'd absolutely love to hear it from you Tony which is the craziest story which happened to you on a road together with a band? Which you can legally share. Crazy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I'm so bad with this. Oh, my God. Uh, crazy story. Oh, jeez. Uh, give me a warning <laughs> next time you're going to ask something like that. That was your warning. <laughs> no warnings. <laughs> Life no warning. uh, gives you no intermissions. <laughs> uh, there must be something, but I... Uh, Jesus, like back in the day, I remember already in the first tour. I remember we were in San Sebastian with uh, Stradivarius and Rhapsody, and and uh, the venue. It was nice, like this huge hall. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many, maybe three thousand people that you can fit in there. And we had a huge halo storm, like mm -hmm. rain and halo coming down, and and uh, and and people were getting wet outside. And some, the, the roof gathered so much water mm -hmm. that it partially collapsed. Not oh much God, of it, but anyway, so like this huge metal shingles that <laughs> they came flying down and they could have actually hit people and, oh it, you know, serious consequences. So, so the um, Stradivarius were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if this whole thing is going to happen. Yeah. And uh, Rhapsody already canceled. No, 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 we are not going to play the show. And, mm -hmm. and uh, But then San Sebastian Mayer... Mm -hmm. uh, he he came over and oh, I I will you know personally guarantee that everything's gonna be fine like <laughs> oh, oh, oh really <laughs> nice thing and uh, I remember thing that I remember really vividly is that when Jens Johansson came and talked to me and asked that what are we gonna do what is Sonata gonna yeah. do and I that told him it's really scary because you know thinking that if there are a lot of people in there and one of those plates come flying yeah. down again well, and it's is, gonna it's gonna it's no be joke, a huge mess right. <laughs> so yeah so uh, we were like maybe I, I think we're gonna cancel and Jens looked at me in the eyes and said that have you ever been to a riot and walked off <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> so, so that that's the thing and the whole thing it was a great show yeah uh, everybody all the bands played and it was fantastic really people were really happy to be there after all the confusion and things and 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 uh, we actually played our song San Sebastian there live mm -hmm. for the first time yeah. ever 
That's awesome. So awesome. That's that's a story. It's not a huge myth. <laughs> no, no, no. Story, it's a, it's a like great a, one. It's a great one. Yeah, holding for me. <laughs> awesome. Tony, thank you so much for your time. Just as a reminder, everyone, Sonata's Articles, the new studio album, The Acoustic Adventures, is going to be out on the 21st of January. Make sure you pick it up. It's a, it's a great record. I'm sure you will absolutely enjoy it. Tony, last message for the fans. Anything you want to share with them? Stay healthy. Take care of yourself and the people around you and uh let's make this world roll again and then see you soon absolutely thank you so much man keep rocking thank you